Hello, my name's Miss Weatherall and I'm Royal Wootton Bassett Academy's lead practitioner for its Holocaust, Genocide and Human Rights programme. As we approach July the 11th and the 25th anniversary of the genocide at Srebrenica in Bosnia, we've set our students, staff, parents and wider community a challenge. Personal challenges adapted from, it, from ideas our friends at Remembering Srebrenica have shared with us that will help us all come together, albeit socially distanced and remotely, to learn and to remember. As you can see, our school community, in partnership with our Trust Schools Lawn Manor Academy in Kingsbury Green, are taking up at least one challenge to mark Srebrenica Memorial Day and this 25th anniversary. Through art, writing, their steps, silences or other means, they are coming together to understand that every action matters. So for my own personal challenge, I'm creating these nine short films to do my bit to inform and inspire others. In this second film, I'll be focusing on Dr Gregory Stanton's 10 stages of genocide to reflect on those phases and conditions in which genocide was made possible in Bosnia, sharing a few personal reflections and comments and pointing you to sites, resources, organisations and stories that can further your own knowledge and understanding. So let me begin with this summary of Stanton's model used by our friends at the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Dr Gregory Stanton developed 10 stages, this model that helped people understand that genocide wasn't chance. It never just happened. It wasn't an act of God. It was humans doing it to other humans. It was organised. It was planned. That there are a set of conditions and circumstances which occur in a given society, um, which are created to build the climate in which genocide can take place. Dr Stanton understood that these stages may occur simultaneously or in a different order, but his understanding of the Holocaust and genocide since made him realise that there were some common factors, some warning signs that had we seen them and acted and prevented them, then genocide wouldn't have ultimately happened. So these are the conditions, these are the themes and the issues that we all need to be vigilant for in today's world and to recognise when we're studying any genocide, uh, past, present or in the future. Dr Stanton understood that these stages shifted. But in any instance of genocide, stage one is called classification. It's the idea that you divide a society up into them and us thinking. You distinguish people for, by their nationality, their ethnicity, their race or religion, that they are somehow not like you, that they are lesser than you, less worthy than you, maybe not even as human as you. Classification is a key method in dividing society and it creates a power struggle between groups. In Bosnia, this was true of Bosnian Serbs distinguishing themselves from Bosnian Muslims or Bosniaks, Croats or other non-Serb entities, people. In doing so, they created a situation where stage two would be possible. If you've classified people and you've divided them up, then it's perfectly possible to use symbols, colours and religious symbols forced upon that group or used against them to mark them out as different, inferior and to increase the ease to discriminate and persecute them. We've seen this in the past, haven't we? The yellow star for Jews during the Holocaust, the blue check scarf in Eastern Zone in Cambodia. But in Bosnia, this was, this was different. They were ordered to wear in one region, Priador, a white armband or, or, ha or hang bedsheets from their house windows. This is all part of the discrimination process, of the humiliation process, the dehumanising process, but it keeps us being able to identify people quickly and easily, reducing people to a symbol, uh, reducing their identity and their culture and their traditions to just a white armband. If you've done that, then quite clearly it's easy to discriminate people, to separate them, to prohibit or prevent them from doing certain things, that you can fire them from certain jobs, restrict their rights, take that away from them and require passes and things for travel. 
All of this is made possible through them and us thinking and through symbolisation. In the next step, dehumanisation, one group denies the humanity of another and makes the victim group seem subhuman. If you dehumanise people, it makes it easier to overcome any normal human revulsion against their eventual murder. And if you look here at this diagram, you can see that in Bosnia, hate propaganda was used to create this impression that non-Serbs were rude, mean, selfish and evil, creating this idea of an other. That members of the victim group were no longer described as humans, they were animals, they were vermin, they were diseases to be got rid of. Dehumanisation justifies any potential murder by calling it ethnic cleansing. You're somehow purifying the land. You're making it better by ridding it of these, these lesser people. Such euphemisms hide the horror of mass murder. And of course, human dehumanisation means that your group, the superior group, is made to feel so much better, so much more powerful, so much more in control than the weaker, inferior other. This was true of what was happening in Bosnia. As I mentioned from the start, genocide is no act of God. It is no act of chance. It is organised. Genocide is a group and social crime. It has to have that degree of organisation. How can you kill hundreds, thousands, millions of people without the weapons, the means to do so, without the camps being built, without the the hate being stirred up and orchestrated. So the state usually organises and arms and financially supports groups that make genocidal massacres possible. In Bosnia, the Serb government began ethnic cleansing in Bosnia in order to have a pure Serb region. Concentration camps were built, not necessarily from scratch as in the Holocaust, but sites were identified, old factories were used for such purposes. And of course, Organisation involves training your armies, your militias, the groups who are going to do the killings or, or commit the attacks. Combined with all of these first five stages is the idea of polarising people. You don't just divide them and classify them into them and us, you drive them further and further apart at ends of a spectrum. And this increases with hate being broadcast in the print media, on the radios, on the TV. Laws are passed that might forbid intermarriage and social interaction. And those people who might be described as moderate in these groups are often intimidated and assassinated themselves. And as you can see here, that was true of what was happening in Bosnia, where Serb and non-Serb marriages were restricted and new laws forbidding, forbidding that were, were soon put in place. Then, of course, you turn to preparation. As we said, genocide isn't chance. It doesn't just happen by accident. It's prepared for and it's organised. So if you're going to prepare, then you need to have your symbols in place, your armbands, your headscarves. You need to be drawing up death lists or identification lists of where and who your victims are. Uh, and, and you might want to separate them, restrict them, like in the Holocaust in ghettos or in certain parts of town. You'll want them to have identifying features that mark them out. So all of this is the preparation for genocide to take place. And once you've got all those conditions ripe and ready to go, then of course, population is prepared to accept or encourage or be involved in persecution. So this persecution can take many forms. In Bosnia we saw non-Serb men um, sent to concentration camps for work. They were often tortured, beaten, um, there were massacres, there was genocide. Non-Serb women, young girls were targeted with sexual violence as a weapon of war and there was public ridicule and marginalisation of these groups. Stage nine is extermination itself. We don't call it sort of mass murder, although that's exactly what it is. Extermination plays into the hands of the perpetrators. The extermination word is like cleansing and getting rid of impurities or disease or animals, like you would with a cockroach or, or a, um, an insect that you want to get rid of. So this act of murder or this extermination is 
is the ninth stage, the killing of the target group in Bosnia. This was Bosniak Muslims and it was Jews during the Holocaust and so on. Extermination is the ninth stage. But tenth stage, though, beyond the killing, you might think, well, what else is possible beyond the killing of a group and the act of genocide itself? Well, what follows is very, very predictable. And it happens in every instance of genocide, and that is denial. Continuing denial is among the surest indicators that a further genocide or massacre is possible or likely. Genocide's culprits, they dig up graves, they burn bodies, they hide or, or destroy evidence. Denial extends the crime of genocide to future generations of the victims. And this is still happening today, particularly in Bosnia. So the tenth stage isn't the killing, it's the denial that that killing has actually taken place without closure, without justice, and without reconciliation. So these are our 10 stages. If you'd like to find out more, then please do look up the Genocide Watch website, um, research Dr. Gregory Stanton, learn more about these stages using the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust website, and you may well be able to use this as part of your personal challenge. So this year, as we mark the 25th anniversary, do have a look at the personal challenges, Every Action Matters. Consider which one you're going to take up or if there's another that you think you can um, develop and explore. And see whether it's possible to incorporate anything that we've talked about today in that response. We look forward to seeing what you come up with.